years ago. Um, it lasted for a thousand years, and the population at its height was around 10,000 people, which is around 2,000 families at its peak. So by our standards, this is a small community. You know, it's not anything large, but for 9,000 years ago, shortly after the Ice Age ends, that's a major development. People living in one location, 10,000 people, for a thousand year period is a pretty substantial development for shortly after the Ice Age. Um, Chattelhoyuk was three times the size of Jericho, around three acres in size. And it's not really a city, but an overgrown village. Okay, it's a good example of an organic village that just grows and expands over time. You don't have city planning occurring at Chattelhoyuk. And it's basically composed of huge apartment-like complexes. Okay, these large sort of adobe-like um, apartment buildings with around a thousand interconnected rooms. If you've seen pictures of Middle Eastern um, residential areas today, it, it's kind of like the rooftops and everything's all connected to where you can just walk across the rooftops. That's real similar to what we see at Chattelhuya. These large sort of adobe-like apartment complexes that are all interconnected. So it's a um, residential pattern that develops early on and it's still prevalent today in, in parts of the Middle East. Um, it's thought that the apartments were occupied by clusters of extended families that were um, sort of independent social economic units. It probably would have been like a, a tribal level society. It's thought that um, the people of Chattelhuyuk may have um, controlled the obsidian trade that occurred in the area. So the obsidian sources, the obsidian quarries were located nearby and that would have been a source of wealth. Um, their food was supplied by foraging and small-scale farming. So you see that sort of mixed subsistence strategy, kind of 50-50 that we talked about previously. Okay, those are some beginning ideas talking about sort of the beginnings of complexity.